Sanjiang Mai, we got the opportunity to visit various ecosystems that the villagers regularly use. And to me, it was amazing how interconnected all of these ecosystems were. If one of them wasn't functioning at its fullest potential, that would affect all the other ecosystems and thus the villagers as well. The mangroves were perhaps one of the most important ecosystems for the villagers in Tanjiao Mai. But the mangroves are also dependent on the seagrasses and the coral reefs. A lot of fish are born in the mangroves where they can live in the roots um, for extra protection. Once they get older, they then transition to the sea where there's less protection. <laughs> At first glance, a mud flat seems to be an area that doesn't have a lot of life and is just a lot of sand and mud. However, once you actually get into that mud and start exploring, there, you can see a large amount of organisms. So we got to uncover all the biodiversity that's hidden underneath the mud. Is that them? I don't know. Look at it. Lots of soldier crabs, lots of sand dollars, starfish. They expel their stomach out yeah. and wrap it around. Wait, that's their stomach? Uh, squid were in there, there were fish, and we also got to see the ways in which as you walk from a beach or a mud flat towards the open ocean, how does the seagrass change? So we started at the beach and we're identifying the species, uh, the percent cover of the seagrass, as well as any organisms that we could find in the seagrass and in the mud. We found a couple. Hey guys, what is your opinion? Do you think this is something? Oh, so you found another one. That has, it's like a shell that has something in it. And in the seagrasses, we actually saw various stretches of seagrasses that were nibbled away, um, which is a sign of dugongs being there, which was pretty cool for us to the see. The tops look like nibbled off. Yeah, these are all these are not dugong. Dugong. So in Banjiao Mai, they are actively pursuing ecotourism and one of the reasons they're able to do that is they've conserved their ecosystems. They have nearly pristine environments, um, so that's a big attraction for visitors. One day we had an excursion to the Emerald Cave, which is an ecotourism site uh, near Banjiao Mai. And it's pretty cool because you get into the water from the boat and you actually snorkel through the cave until you get uh, to the other side and it opens to this huge area with just enormous cliffs, really great views. Um, so that was a cool activity for us to do. Um, and it also ta taught us a little bit about uh, ecotourism and how that's being used in that area. If an environment or an ecosystem in an area is degraded or uh, on the decline, that's going to affect the ability of that community to use that environment for ecotourism. It also affects their ability to acquire food from their ecosystems, which for fishing communities like Ban Jiao Mai is critical to their livelihoods. excited to get the opportunity to speak with the sub-district government about uh, all the projects that they're working on with the villagers. Learning hands-on from the villagers, I was able to discover that it's really important for them to be actively involved in conservation, not only because it increases their uh, connection to those ecosystems, but it's also more effective because they're the ones who live in these ecosystems. They're the ones who use these ecosystems on a daily basis. So they're in a better position to actually preserve those ecosystems for the future. One of the great things about ISDSI 
is that they allow us to integrate into communities and really get to know them on a personal level. In Banjao Mai, we got to stay with host families for a whole week, got to know them on a personal level, and we also got to see so much natural beauty and such kindness in the hearts of the people who live there. Okay. <laughs>